you probably remember these things. It's uh, called the Viewmaster. I don't know if they still make them or not, but everybody had them when they were kids. You pop one of these little discs in and then you get stereo photographs of various and sundry things, cartoon characters or places around the world, things like that. Uh, there were, you know, literally thousands of these uh, cards made and no doubt millions of these uh, Viewmasters uh, made over the years. Uh, stereo photography didn't uh, begin with the plastic age or the Viewmaster age. Uh, in fact, uh, back in the 19th century, uh, there were there were stereo uh, photographs and various means to to use them, and and uh, they made it into the living room, much as the Viewmasters did later. Here's uh, now if you're of uh, I think uh, the average working man could probably afford uh, one of these things. And uh, here at the Walter Elwood Museum, we've got probably a dozen of these uh, viewers floating around and hundreds of these uh, old stereo cards. This one is, oh, uh, somewhere in the Middle East. Uh, there's a mosque in the background. And what you would do is you'd, uh, you'd, you'd put the put the stereo card in here and then attach this to the thing and I guess uh, this is this part here sticks out so that you uh, put it on the end of your nose and that that gives you the right viewing and then depending on what your vision is you move back and forth until the uh, exotic uh, site comes comes into view and here we got some kind of old ruins of something or other uh, but Anyway, this is, uh, this is how people got to see what it was uh, like around the world, and explorers like uh, Walter Elwood would uh, uh, come and, uh, come and uh, gather these things from all over the world and bring them to your home. Now, if you're a little, uh, little on the wealthier side, This is, uh, this is like the uh, cabinet version of your early televisions. This is, uh, you know, very, very nice wood. Basically the same principle, only, only you've got uh, better quality lenses, uh, a, a wooden holder for, uh, for the cards, and then again you just move this thing back and forth. And you get, uh, get a nice uh, stereo view of uh, someplace uh, very few people will ever get to. And then it folds up neatly uh, and you can store it away until your next party. And uh, that's what people did. Now, if you were really on the wealthy side, you got one of these gizmos. This baby. This is the Viewmaster for the rich and famous. Look at the quality of the wood. Uh, you have uh, high quality optics. You look through the viewer here and what you're looking at, this is an older version, what you're looking at is glass slides like, uh, like this one here. These are from the turn of the last century. This happens to be one of the Grand Canyon. Uh, and uh, like the modern plastic viewmasters, you can advance. There's a little lever on the side, you press it down, the old slide goes down, the new slide takes its place, and you're looking at something else. Holds about 20 slides. Uh, very advanced uh, technology uh, uh, for the age. Now, Walter Elwood Museum has hundreds, hundreds of these glass slides. We don't even know what's on a lot of them. We really haven't chucked them all. Uh, a lot of them were uh, uh, photographs that were uh, taken uh, taken by the former owner of this uh, this gadget uh, in his uh, tours around the country. There's uh, you know, some Dodge or Tombstone uh, Tombstone pictures, Grand Canyon, the Northwest, Canadian Rockies. There's some uh, photographs of the uh, stereo photographs of the Sagandaga Valley uh, before it was flooded to make the Great Sagandaga Reservoir. Okay, what we'd like to do is, is uh, purchase a scanner, a high-quality professional scanner, 
that can capture all the information on these old stereo slides and scan them into digital form uh, so that they can be preserved. They're ancient right now. In the uh, flood of a couple of years ago, these slides were in a room that was literally hanging by a thread uh, when Guy Park Manor was collapsing uh, from the flood. The floor underneath the room that these were kept in disappeared. There was nothing left of it. The walls were gone, the floors were gone, everything in it was gone. And this room was just hanging over the edge. Uh, it wasn't until the flood waters went down that they were able to shore it up and keep it, keep it from collapsing. All this would have been destroyed, lost forever. Uh, we have other slides, uh, glass slides, that are uh, 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 professional slides, the kind you could uh, buy at a souvenir shop. You know, pictures of the Brooklyn Bridge from shortly after it was built in New York Harbor, uh, things like that. Uh, there may not be other copies of it floating around. We don't know. We, we could have the, uh, the only copies left. These things are fragile. And, uh, and it's been years since there's been any instruments uh, floating around that people would use to even look at these slides. So uh, this is what we hope to do. Uh, we hope to raise, raise enough money to uh, get this stuff done. Uh, uh, maybe pay somebody to do the grunt work to enter them in and then have, uh, have them professionally uh, uh, fixed up and hopefully preserved in digital form and uh, maybe depending on what's, what's on these slides, uh, we're going to uh, make a book or two out of them. Uh, we also have, uh, in addition to the stereo slide collection, we have a large, again hundreds if not thousands, of glass slides of, uh, of nature uh, objects. And, uh, and we have uh, Walter Elwood's uh, personal collection of, of uh, ectochrome slides from, uh, from the 1940s, uh, the, the, the Amsterdam Victory Gardens that he was in charge of, things like that. Uh, none of which have been seen by anybody uh, in years. And we'd like to make those available to the public again in some way, shape, or form. And uh, now I'm going to show you uh, how we've displayed some of those slides, uh, those individual nature slides over the years. This lamp uh, you're looking at uh, survived uh, the Great Flood. It was, uh, it was in the flood zone. It was on the first floor of Guy Park Manor when the uh, flood uh, washed through there. And it was just high enough off the ground uh, that it didn't get destroyed. Uh, and we're going to take a closer look here and uh, show you how it works. Each uh, segment here is an individual slide uh, from the Walter Elwood Nature Collection of slides. We've got uh, birds up here and the whole thing uh, swings around so you can uh, so you can not only uh, view the the different animals and birds and, and such, uh, but the slides also come out. So we can replace them from time to time from our absolutely vast collection. Here's a bear up here, another bird. Uh, this, uh, I don't know, it looks like an elephant to me. A uh, skunk, of course. Uh, stuff from all over the world that uh, was collected over the years. Different kinds of ducks and Got mostly birds in this collection, but other other stuff. And uh, here's a tree ring, uh, and so on. So, this is what we uh, this is what we hope to do: preserve all this stuff for the next generation. <laughs>